All right, guys, this is a uh, long plane review for Charlins Road on the uh, Amstrad CPC, and it's a conversion of one of my favourite ever arcade games of all time. Charlins Road from Konami in uh, 1985, and uh, this was a uh, basically a sequel to Yi'ar Kung Fu, and some of the bosses in this game will uh, bear some uh, similarity to uh, some of them you fought in uh, Yi'ar Kung Fu. Um, but this is a very simple but really really good fun um, kick him up. Here's the arcade cabinet and we're going to take a look at the arcade original first of all as a comparison. Ooh, that music sends goosebumps up my arms. And yeah guys, as you can see, pretty simple stuff. Sort of three levels of platform. It's very fast paced action and all you, all you do is kick <laughs> and actually this game is also known as Kicker um, so there's a but it's, it's identical and yeah you just basically jumping up and down platforms and um, kicking enemies the green enemies will uh, reveal uh, power ups to pick up and on the uh, second playthrough of a level a boss will appear and we can use our energy pick, uh, special weapons there to get rid of him and other enemies. Now these uh, triad guys, they appear from those doorways. And you've got to kill a certain number of them. And then you pro progress on to the uh, next step. Now as far as I know guys, this game is basically continuous. There's no end to it. It just uh, There's more and more steps and it just gets harder and harder. So it's kind of like a high score attack game really. And uh, I think after about five levels, it starts looping around. And this and this is the same in the Amstrad version. So pay attention to the graphics there, guys, and the music you've just heard. So uh, let's uh, start up the Amstrad version. Very nice uh, loading screen there. And uh, yes, well, this uh, conversion was done by a company called The Edge in about uh, 1987 and uh, the programmer there j says uh, by John Doe obviously didn't want to reveal his name John Doe obviously if you don't know is American terminology for uh, um, a person of unknown uh, name and origin but let's start this off oh great music there and here we go Now we've got very very colourful graphics and as you can see um, it's not moving as fast as the arcade original by a long shot and um, well the graphics are not brilliant very chunky very blocky but it's retained, it's, it has retained the feel of the arcade original What's great though is that they've uh, they've got the music down though. Uh, the music sounds really fantastic, and uh, I would have absolutely hated them if they hadn't bothered to put the uh, music from the arcade original in because that's one of the best things about it. Guts, <laughs> yeah. And at the end of every level, he shouts guts for some reason. I never knew what that meant as a kid. These days, I guess it means uh, you've got guts, kid, or something. I don't know. And uh, here we are on the second run through of this step, and uh, obviously we've uh, a boss appears now, and uh, we're killing him with the uh, special uh, sort of rocket weapon we've picked up from one of those green guys. Ooh, sometimes your flying kicks do uh, actually just sort of fly through enemies without actually doing any damage sometimes. That's one, that's one uh, bug. But that's the first step done. Well, <laughs> we move on uh, from step zero to step one. And basically guys, uh, like in the arcade original, I don't, uh, I don't think there is an ending to this game. Um, I don't, uh, certainly not in the Amstrad version. But we're going to basically go through ten steps and uh, 
moving on basically when we get to step 10 um, you'll see that basically it just loops around back to the uh, first level uh, and has the same uh, difficulty level as like the uh, level we've just played so it doesn't increase in difficulty any further so that's where we'll stop the long play of this game and uh, yeah guys uh, um this is one of my favourite arcade games of all time, so uh, I would probably be extra critical of any conversion that comes out. And uh, whilst this isn't brilliant by a long shot, I do actually really enjoy playing this. Uh, sure, the controls are not very responsive, they're a little bit stodgy, um, the collision detection at times can be a little bit off, um, there's one or two bugs in the game it's a little bit too slow <laughs> the graphics are really blocky and you know not the sprites are not brilliant I really don't like his flying kick and um, design however I still really really like this game and uh, conversion I still find it really really good fun to play and I still occasionally pick up pick it up to this day and give it a run through as well as the arcade original which is a good sign because really, all the other signs of this game uh, point, it, point to it being a really, really bad conversion. But hell, um, you should go and compare this to the uh, Specky and Commodore 64 versions of Charlin's Road. This is uh, this is so much better than them. The Specky version looks horrible and uh, it's far, far too slow. It's about half the speed of this uh, Amstrad version. And the Commodore 64 version, I I can't make out what's going wrong there. There's um, very 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 poor collision detection I think on, on go there in the Commodore version uh, it just doesn't feel right at all in any way uh, as much as the Amstrad version has got its faults um, you know it kind of it kind of feels like Charlin's Road oh lost my first life there I could actually do this without losing a life I have done before but uh, I just wanted to get another arcade long play, arcade conversion long play to the Amstrad done tonight. And uh, you can gain more lives by, um, I think you need to score, oh, it's either 10,000 or 20,000 points. And there's a good way of uh, basically racking up your points to get extra lives. Occasionally you'll see like things uh, float across the screen. Um, Oh, like that, like a, it looks like a piece of cake there floating across. But you can use your special weapon to rack up masses of points. As you can see there, getting loads and loads and loads. And, uh, and soon enough I'll be able to sort of collect some bonus lives. So that's a very, very handy tip there to get through the uh, Amstrad version. You've probably noticed, guys, that um, you've got probably two uh, primary forms of attack, apart from jumping, um, which is your flying kick and is basically a standing kick. Now, uh, there is a, a little bit of lag with the controls, so I basically end up just using the uh, flying kick all the time. And uh, it takes a little bit of practice because unfortunately, unlike the arcade original which has a separate bun uh, button for uh, jumping and sep a separate button for kicking, um, this is all done on one fire button. So basically to do uh, like a flying jump kick you need to press fire and up and right or up and left at exactly the same time as each other. Which can be quite tricky to do and sometimes as you saw a minute ago uh, I ended up just jumping without kicking and uh, losing uh, losing some energy um, but when I get when you get the hang of it it's not too bad uh, I'm using keyboard uh, to play this game though not joystick maybe that might make it easier just to uh, make sure I hit all three keys at the same time Okay, I should mention that uh, basically um, you've got basically three hits you're allowed to take before you get uh, knocked out. You can see that indicated uh, just above the uh, plane area to the right. So it counts from one, two, three, and then you're out and lose a life. Which is actually a pretty cool system. And certainly when you're on uh, 
number three, things get really sort of tense as you hope to uh, get through the level before someone knocks you down again. And then to the left of that, you'll see like a um, sort of strange looking character in a number which says 15, 14, now 13, 12. That's just basically a counter for how many more enemies there will, there will be appearing before you uh, can move on. When that reaches zero and you've, uh, you've killed everyone, let's move on to the next level. And as you progress, you can see that like guys are now doing like flying kicks at you and sort of uh, do these weird sort of ducking moves on the floor. Now, basically, guys, we've kind of gone through all the levels now, and we've certainly seen all the scenery now, and uh, we've gone back to basically like the first level. Um, just things get a lot more tougher now, with uh, your enemies able to sort of fly and kick at you. And now there's like a, a bird at the top of the screen that's like uh, either dropping rocks or uh, shitting on your head, basically. There he is. So you know, you've now got to watch out for that over the next sort of uh, five steps. Uh, yes, the other thing I've mentioned is this, yeah, the scrolling there is not particularly good, it's a little bit jerky. Well, actually it's quite jerky to be honest with you. But you know what, I think the game's so frenetic, even if it's slower paced than the arcade original, that you don't really have time to sort of uh, think about, oh yeah, dodgy scrolling. Um, it's quite an involved game, so uh, I guess it kind of when you're playing it, you kind of overlook its flaws somewhat. I guess, it may, but maybe watching back on a video on YouTube, it doesn't look as quite as impressive when, unless you're actually playing it. Hmm. But here's a female boss. Uh, she's quite impressive. And certainly a little bit tougher than the uh, male boss that appears in the game. Oh, I'm getting a bit cream there. Oh, yeah, I rack up loads of points from that flying pizza. Ah, oh, but I ended up losing a life, never mind. I do like the weapons in the game, and uh, uh, I'm glad that all the weapons do feature in the uh, amateur version. We've got this like spiked ball um, that you can control the direction of. And you can move it left and right. And uh, yeah, your weapons seem to last a lot longer than uh, on the uh, uh, arcade version, which I'm really thankful for. Uh, yeah, the second weapon there, the uh, rockets, and then the uh, third weapon really is that, is that ball that sort of flies around you, protecting you. Doesn't guarantee protection though, if the ball is to the right and someone's attacking you to the left, you're still going to get a, a hit on you. Um, but you probably notice as well, I'm pretty much sticking to the lower levels all the time. I find it gives me more uh, space and wiggle room, essentially. And especially on now, from step 5 onwards with the bird flying over your head, uh, it's much, much safer to stick to the bottom levels. But yeah, guys, I absolutely love that music. Um, even though it doesn't change at all uh, between levels, uh, I don't get tired of it, and it doesn't it doesn't start annoying me. I can't speak for everyone on that, but uh, I do love that and the little jingle when you start a level. Just like just love those little touches. And yeah, guys, apparently this is supposed to be a sequel to Ye Are Kung Fu. Um, at least certainly the back of the box art on the. Uh, 8-bit Amstrad and Commodore and Spectrum versions list it as a uh, sequel to ER Kung Fu. Whether it's supposed to be or not, it's not entirely clear if it's officially a sequel, but, um, but you know what, I'm going to take a look at ER Kung Fu on the Amstrad at some point soon, seeing as I've done this game. And uh, apologies to uh, YouTube user Cholo, he's already done a speedrun of uh, Shaolin's Road on the Amstrad. Um, but I've waited a couple of years uh, before I did this. Because uh, basically, this is, my, this is one of my favourite arcade games of all time. So uh, 
I really, really wanted to do a, a review of this at least. But yeah, good stuff. Um, kind of running out of things to say now, really. <laughs> Oh yeah, there was um, uh, this. This was a uh, fairly recently released on a uh, Microsoft's Game Room um, service for the uh, Xbox 360. Um, apparently, you can do it on a Windows-based PC as well. And um, they did a really, really excellent job of uh, emulating the arcade original and adding in lots of uh, different modes and stuff like that. And uh, apparently, it's really, really excellent. Um, with uh, different go uh, awards and gold medals you, c you can achieve for different uh, things and there's like survival rounds and all sorts um, so it's definitely worth checking out if you've got an Xbox 360 I presume the game room service is still uh, going and running I've never used it personally, I don't have an Xbox 360 I do have the original Xbox somewhere but, uh, to be honest, I'm more likely to be playing on my uh, main cab or uh, my Amstrad still. Still plenty more Amstrad games to be looking at. <laughs> oh, racking up loads of points there. And if you're careful, you can basically lurk around the uh, spawn uh, spots there where the enemies spawn out of and be a cheeky spawn killer and uh, kill them before they even sort of get through the doors you see the yellow, little uh, yellow uh, circle there flashing around the doorway then uh, you can do a flying kick or use your weapon and it will kill the enemy about to come through like so and you can very very quickly dispatch uh, and get through a level Dispatch, uh, dispatching all the enemies that way really, really quickly. And to be honest, it's, it's a good idea to make a uh, quicker progress than slower progress. Obviously, the more enemies on uh, in the level, uh, the harder it will be. Um, Shane, the Amsterdam version only has like the two bosses. It's basically the female boss or the male boss. But they're quite well done. Um, but if you've uh, already picked up uh, like a weapon, then uh, generally they're not too hard to defeat. Oh, lost another life there. Yeah, and as you see there, guys, I actually did a flying kick, and it sort of went through a couple of enemies there. So the collision detection isn't always perfect in the game. But yeah, actually, some decent sound effects in the game. So. Uh, uh, the program of this did uh, really, really well, I think, actually, considering. Don't know why he wanted to hide his name as John Doe, but uh, I don't know. I, w I would have been reasonably proud of his conversion. Um, the Edge, uh, I mentioned earlier, the Edge was the company that released this game. Um, they did quite a few games for the Amstrad over time. Uh, Brian Blood Axe, I remember, that's one of the earliest games I did. Uh, Fairlight, um, they did two Garfield games, I've never actually looked at before. Uh, Inside Outing, I think that was quite a good uh, Get Dexter kind of clone. Uh, oh, they did a Snoopy game, and uh, yeah, but not much else though, I'm afraid. But uh, Charlin, their Charlin's Road uh, version was picked up by Ocean Software's uh, Hit Squad label for budget re-release. Because uh, I actually bought this on budget from the Hit Squad label for two ninety nine, and I was really happy of that, definitely. Oh yeah, of course we're on step nine here actually, so we're very very close to the end now, guys. 
so essentially this is the uh, last uh, level of Shawlins Road on the uh, Amstrad. Uh, we only got a few more guys to defeat and then basically, well this is completed I guess. Yep, and we've got the guts. <laughs> and yeah, basically it loops back uh, to uh, first level, step zero. As you can see guys, there's no uh, sort of bird flying across the top of the screen. Um, the enemies aren't really doing jump kicks at you. So it kind of like, uh, yeah, it's just basically reset itself. Um, and the difficulty is the same as uh, on the first level, which uh, we just basically loop back to. So there you go guys, that's uh, Charlene's Road. And uh, I suppose I better sum up a bit of a review. Um, you know, this game, well, as I said earlier, this game's got an awful lot of faults. Um, horrible blocky graphics, <laughs> at times poorly defined sprites, not very good scrolling. In fact, when the, look, at, look when he looks at you in the um, face in the screen there, he's got one eye <laughs> and one nose. Like a evil cyclops or something like that, I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, there's some dodgy collision detection um, to go with the poor scrolling and, and even some laggy controls as well. Um, and by all rights, this should be rated very, very poor game, but I actually really, really enjoy playing this. It's a, it's a really, really enjoyable conversion. And um, I was, uh, I personally, I'll give it a real high mark, actually. But, um, well, not everyone's going to like this. Um, so I should really reflect that. So I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10. Personally, I'm kind of itching to give it an 8, 8.5. But really, on reflection, it's got a lot of faults. But it's a very, very enjoyable conversion. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, yeah, 7.5 out of 10. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, cheers. Thank you. And uh, goodbye. And guts. Haha. <laughs>